Okay, so in this video, we will look at the following limit and see that it is an example of a limit that should be tackled using an elementary technique and not using L'Hopital's rule. So let's first look at this from an elementary point of view. Let's divide through by x. So x over x is simply 1 plus sine of x over x. So the only thing of interest really here is what's happening as 1 is a constant to sine of x over x when x tends to infinity. Well, if you remember, sine of x is a very simple wave function. Sine of 0 is 0. And then you have a wave function that will oscillate forever between 1 and negative 1. So, for all values of x, sine of x is always between negative 1 and 1. So let's see if we use our intuition here. We have a fraction. As x tends to infinity, well, sine of x does not converge to any one particular value. It keeps oscillating forever, so sine of x alone does not converge to a unique y value. But for any x value, it always remains between negative 1 and 1. So in absolute value, sine of x is no bigger than 1. So we have here a quotient of two functions, the one on top, is never exceeding 1 in absolute value, and the 1 on the bottom is getting larger and larger and larger. So the intuition here is that this limit should be equal to 0, so this should shrink to 0, and therefore we should be left with quite simply 1. So the original limit should be equal to 1. And we can easily show that although sine of x oscillates between negative 1 and 1, it indeed is killed by x in the limit, as x tends to infinity. And we can do so quite simply using the squeeze theorem. So let's look at this in absolute value. So we have sine of x over x in absolute value. Well, the absolute value of anything is always non-negative, and this will be, as x tends to positive infinity, x is positive, this will be the absolute value of sine of x, over x. As I've just said, as x is positive, we can drop the absolute value on x as the absolute value of x is simply x when x is positive. And then we can use our upper bound. The absolute value of sine of x is at most 1. So this is at most 1 over x. And now, as x tends to infinity, 1 over x converges to 0. And so you see, in absolute value, sine of x over x is at least 0, but the upper bound is shrinking to 0. So, in the limit, sine of x over x in absolute value is squeezed between 0 and 0, so it has nowhere else to go. It must converge to 0. But, if the absolute value of an expression shrinks to 0, the expression itself must shrink to 0. So, our intuition was correct. By the squeeze theorem, sine of x over x does shrink to 0, and the limit therefore is simply equal to 1. So you see a very short solution using our intuition of the sine function being between negative 1 and 1, and a very short and nice application of the squeeze theorem. Well, let's look at this limit now, and again, as x tends to infinity, and sine of x is always between negative 1 and 1, then x plus sine of x will also go to infinity. So we have here an infinity over infinity case. Let's see what happens if we had tried to use L'Hopital's rule instead of our very short and elegant solution using the squeeze theorem. Well, 
So as we have just said, the case is infinity over infinity. So we can try to apply the Lopitalis rule. The derivative of x is 1 plus the derivative of sine, which is cosine, over the derivative of 1, which is simply 1. So let's not bother. So after an application of L'Hopital's rule, the limit x plus sine of x over x becomes the limit of 1 plus cos of x. And there's something funny going on here. If you sketch a graph of cos of x, again, it is a wave function, exactly like sine of x, the only difference is there's a slight shift in the wave, and cos of 0 is 1, so it begins first at 1, and then again it oscillates forever between 1 and negative 1. So cos of x, for all values of x, will always be between negative 1 and 1. If we look at the expression, therefore, 1 plus cos of x, if we add 1 across both inequalities, 1 plus minus 1 is 0. One plus one is two, so one plus cos of x will always be between zero and two. But if you think of this function, all we've done is we've added to cos of x one, so we've just shifted this function up by one. So the graph of one plus cos of x, well, one plus one is two, so it will begin at two, and then it will oscillate forever between 0 and 2. So now think of this. We're asking here, as x approaches infinity, so as x gets larger and larger and larger, will 1 plus cos of x be approaching a unique y value? And the answer is clearly no. No matter how large x is, 1 plus cos of x will oscillate forever between 0 and 2. So it is not approaching a unique y value in the limit. So all we can say here, because of this never-ending oscillation, is the limit simply does not exist. But here's what's interesting. L'Hopital's rule, at that point you might have a hard time with this because you might think, well, wait, isn't that saying that because this limit does not exist, does that mean that the first limit does not exist? But we know it's clearly not the case. With an elementary solution using the squeeze theorem, we've already proved that the limit is quite simply 1. So we know the original limit does exist. So what's wrong here? Well, if you remember, L'Hopital's rule will only give you an equality between the original limit and the new limit only if the new limit exists, so yields a real number, or is equal to negative or positive infinity. Only under those conditions are the two limits equal. This limit is not a real number, it does not exist, but it also does not go to positive or negative infinity. It does not exist in a very strange way by oscillating forever between 0 and 2. So because this limit does not exist, and not by blowing up to positive or negative infinity, L'Hopital's rule breaks down, and the equality is simply not valid. So here we get complete rubbish with applying L'Hopital's rule, but with a very intuitive and simple solution using the squeeze theorem, we have again almost a one-line solution, being the limit is simply equal to 1. And that's it.